Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. It's Thursday, April 4th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, although I'm having issues with the videos playing and even showing up. If uh, you're tech savvy and you know why they wouldn't be showing up, please let me know because I'm able to press the little blocker button, which would imply that I can play YouTube videos on there, but they're not showing up. So maybe I thought it was something on my end. I didn't have an add-on or something's not updated, Adobe or Flash or Java, but other people can't either. So I, don't, I just don't know what's going on with that. Um, but on YouTube, my channels are DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. I post the links in YouTube's video description so you can check them out. Okay, I got all that st intro stuff done. A poll says almost one-third of Americans believe in a new world order. So on April 3rd, most of you have already seen this because, you know, well, it goes right to the alternative news, right? Survey conducted by public policy polling labeled by many as pro-Obama outfit seems to be aimed at ascribing belief in crazy conspiracy theories to Republicans by mixing in real cover-ups and conspiracies without outlandish ideas. It says here, however, despite the constant media drumbeat about the clear move towards centralization of power, being a baseless conspiracy theory, the poll reveals that 28% of Americans believe that a secretive power elite with a globalist agenda is conspiring to eventually rule the world through an authoritarian world government or new world order. 46% of respondents do not believe this notion, while 25% are not sure. It was interesting, though, it was like 40% Republicans and 15% Democrats. Francis, Pope Francis, a new world pope, is old world and church dogma. So it's kind of an odd uh, illustration. The Catholic world turned upside down with South America up north and him on top. It's weird because they just got hit by lands or basically heavy rains and flooding. Again, when I hear stuff like that, I almost wonder if it was engineered by weather modification so that he could be a savior and say, go down there and, and, uh, and do whatever he's got to do. I don't know. You know, maybe it's an attack against him by certain powers, you know. It says, uh, for the first time in history, Roman Catholic Church has a pope from the New World, but liberal American Catholics should not expect Pope Francis to stray far from the old theology. Some are excitingly different about this new pontiff. It says, I'm manager of birth control, abortion, homosexuality, celibate priests, and the world women in the church. However, he is no revolutionary. So, um, I saw the article. It was called A New World Pope. That's why, at the store, that's why I kind of looked this up. Francis, Pope of a New World, it's a hard cover. I guess it's written by him, so Pope for a New World Order. Uh, Canada EU integration moves forward in the US and NAFTA next. So, this is another conspiracy theory that doesn't exist, like the North American Union. Almost or after almost four years of negotiations, the Canadi Canadian government and the EU are reportedly close to finalizing integration deal known as the SETA, or Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement. Obama announced earlier this year that the administration was also pursuing a similar free trade package with the EU, which analysts say could pave the way for the transatlantic union encompassing all of the North American Union and the e European Union. The experts, the North American Free Trade Agreement, EU super bloc with power over national governments and economies on both sides of the Atlantic would become the de facto regulatory regime for the entire planet. Trans-Pacific Partnership that we were talking about last week, TPP, an oppressive U.S.-led free trade agreement, a corporate power tool of the 1%, one of the least discussed and least reported issues of the Obama regime's effort to bring the TPP agreement to the forefront, it says here an oppressive uh, plurilateral U.S.-led free trade agreement currently being negotiated with several Pacific Rim countries. 600 U.S. corporate advisors have negotiated and had input into the TPP and proposed the draft text not be available to the public, press, or poly policymakers. The level of secrecy surrounding the agreement is unparalleled, says paramilitary teams scatter outside the premise of each round of discussions with helicopters looming overhead. Media outlets impose a near total blackout of the reportage on the subject, and U.S. Senator Ron Wyden says here he was denied access to the negotiation text. The majority of Congress is being kept in the dark as, a substance, as to the substances of uh, the TPP negotiations, while representatives of U.S. corporations like Halliburton, Chevron, Pharma, Comcast, uh, the Motion Picture Association of America, that's how they're going to uh, clamp down on people that file, uh, uh, what is it, uh, file sharing or share files and people like myself that do the news for copyright infringement are uh, being consulted and made privy to details of the agreement. So moving on here, we have Goldman refuses to give up its grip on Canada. 
So it's the Goldman partner to be the next U.S. ambassador to Canada. With the department or with the departure of Goldman, Goldman's Mark Carney from the Bank of Canada, some were concerned uh, it may not be the right word here, delighted, maybe better, that the northern country is finally free of the tentacles emanating from the West. But as it turns out, Goldman's ambitions through the resource-rich North country, uh, northern country are strong to quite strong. As the Global Mail reports that Bruce Hyman, a Chicago-based Goldman Sachs executive and one of Obama's top fundraisers, is in the final talks to become the next U.S. ambassador to Canada. Make the second person uh, to ambassador to Canada be from Chicago. Eric Holder gets busy as he says Enron's uh, skilling may be released from prison over a decade earlier. It appears that uh, Attorney General Eric Holder is so busy uh, not prosecuting Wall Street for being too big to prosecute it, he's decided it is far wiser to spend his time productively by communicating the sentences of convicted financial felons because apparently there was nothing more important to do. Obama regime pushes banks to make home loans to people with weaker credit. So Crypticon puts up a little video here of uh, Groundhog Day doing it all over again. The Obama administration is engaged in a broad push to make more home loans available to people with weaker credit in an effort that officials say will help power the economic recovery, but that skeptics say could open the door to the risky lending that caused the housing crash in the first place. Then we have let them eat Teslas, says why are tuition costs so high in the first place, says government inflated the college loan bubble. The real problem that we've been running into is a higher education bubble, one that the real, real estate bubble has been pumped up by cheap government money. Since 1999, student loan debt has increased by 511%, while disposable income has increased by only 73%. Says it's because the government subsidizes something um, or when they subsidize something, producers respond by raising prices to soak up as much of that subsidy as they can, saying college is no exception. Obama's spiritual advisor sees vibrant faith and comforter in chief. It says here, Joshua DeBoa is not your ordinary pastor. For the past four years, a 30 year old Pentecostal minister was the spiritual advisor to the leader of the free world, praying with President Obama in the Oval Office and leading the regime's outreach to faith based groups. Like someone said in the comment board, if you don't want to believe journalism is dead, read this article. How Obama is blocking out reporters and wrapping himself in a bubble so he can exercise ultimate control of his public image. So this is a photo of Obama's hugging that was released on Election Day 2012. It has become the world's most popular tweet on Twitter. A dressed up version of Obama's State of the Union speech pack with charts and graphs or is huge on YouTube. A playful picture of, pres of the president cavorting with his three-year-old, uh, with a three-year-old in a spider Spider-Man costume is his favorite online. So it says it's courtesy of the Obama image machine, serving up a stream of words, images, and videos that cast the president as commanding, compassionate, and on the ball. In this world, Obama's family is always photogenic. Uh, the first dog, Bo, is always well-behaved, and the vegetables in the South Lawn kitchen garden always seem succulent. So, but it says here you have to look elsewhere for bloopers, baubles, or contrary points of view. Capitalizing on the digital age, the Obama White House is generating its own content like no president before and refining its media strategies in the second term. Yeah, it kind of all started with what? With her giving out the awards, the Oscars, whatever. It says at the same time, it is limiting press access in ways that the administration would have and dared to go. And the president is answering to the public in a more controlled setting than his predecessors. Says this uh, McCurry, who served as press secretary to Blue. Bill Clinton sees an inclination by the Obama's White House to self-publish, coupled with tactics I would never have dreamed of in terms of restricting access for independent news organizations. Obama himself took note of the complaints about limited access and his jokes last month about the gridiron dinner at an annual event where political leaders, journalists, and media execs poke fun at one another. Some of you have said that I'm ignoring the Washington Press Corps, that were too controlling. He says, you know what, you're right. I was wrong and I want to apologize in a video you can watch exclusively at whitehouse.gov. To say three days later, it was no laughing matter when the White House live streamed on the internet Obama's meeting with his export counsel and allowed just one reporter in the room. FAA puts no fly zone over Arkansas oil spill with Exxon employee in charge. Now this is interesting because you should be able to check, uh, play this video, it should still be available. Amazing aerial footage of Arkansas tar sands. Yeah, so it says here tens of thousands of gallons of oil have 
uh, flooded some of the streets and yards of the Mayflower, Arkansas town or city. The Exxon tar sands oil spill is a small taste of what we could see if this Keystone pipeline is approved. The media is largely being kept away from the spill. In the video you can see Exxon's plan to clean it up consists mostly of hoses and paper towels. Yeah, literally, dude, there's like oil flooding down the streets and in people's uh, uh, driveways and that, and you're not seeing any footage of it. So this, um, the FAA announced a temporary no-fly zone that would be enacted over the Arkansas oil spill with word that an Exxon employee was controlling the airspace, though speculation pointed to the idea that the oil company was trying to keep the media away. And the video that I just showed is in this uh, article as well. So let me move fast here, so stick with me. We have Ecuador to sell a third of its Amazon rainforest to Chinese oil companies. They plan to auction out 3 million of the country's 8.1 million hectares of pristine Amazon rainforest to Chinese oil companies. The report comes as oil pollution forced neighboring Peru to declare an environmental state of emergency in its northern Amazon rainforest. Ecuador officials probe apparent Amazon revenge attack involving remote tribes at Director of the foundation that works in Ecuador's rainforest says Amazon tribesmen apparently carried out revenge attacks and killed an undetermined number of people from a rival indigenous group that lives in a, a voluntary isolation. So they attacked the settlement, likely over the weekend. She says an unknown uh, number of people were killed and at least two children were carried off in retaliation uh, for the March 5th spear spearing deaths of a Harani couple. They said it's common for the region's tribes to kidnap foes, offspring as war trophies. Should team up and uh, try to uh, <laughs> try to get, uh, get some of those those uh, Chinese uh, oil workers, maybe. Italy seizes record assets from wind farm tycoon. So the authorities have seized uh, assets worth 1.3 billion euros from a Sicilian businessman involved in renewable energy. Investigators allege that he was a frontman for the mafia investigating illegal earnings. The anti-mafia agency said in a settlement it was the biggest ever seizure of mafia-linked assets. So his assets included 43 wind and solar energy companies and 98 properties. They called him the Lord of Wind. He was so heavily involved in renewable energy. The Bank of Japan to pump 1.4 trillion dollars or yen, whatever, into the economy in unprecedented stimulus. Stimulus. So it says here, unleashed the world's most intense burst of monetary stimulus on Thursday, promising to eject 1.4 trillion into the economy in less than two years. A radical gamble that sent the yen reeling and bond yields to record lows. West Coast children are being hit with thyroid problems following Fukushima, says a report. So the study following children born in California, Alaska, basically the West, uh, one in 16 weeks after the horrific meltdown of Fukushima back in March 2011. So this is, uh, researchers affiliated with the Radiation and Public Health Project uh, further lends credence to previous documentation regarding the way in which radioactive fallout ended up on U.S. soil. The Fukushima fallout appeared to affect all areas of the U.S. and was especially large in some, mostly in western parts of the nation. No surprise here, federal officials say as much as $700 million of Katrina and Rita aid may have been misspent. So, oops, where did it go, right? Report said some homeowners got grants of up to 30000 used the money for something else and that others didn't provide sufficient documents to state officials to show that the work was done. Interesting, because, see, you know, they're going to go after the little guy, whatever, and then uh, not saying that what they, what they were doing was wrong or right, but... Then uh, what about the Red Cross? What about those other big charitable organizations where most of the money was never spent on the people? You know, they can investigate that. No, they're not. So that's their own little money laundering uh, 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 organizations. Hanford Nuclear Waste Site at Risk of Explosion. So they warned that a nuclear site in the United States is the most contaminated one, could explode at any moment, posing a serious threat to lives in the area. This is in Washington State. China pays citizens who choose watery grave. So it says there's just not enough land uh, to bury everyone. It says not many people are buying it. The disappearing rivers of China, more than 28,000 waterways vanished from the nation's maps, sparking fears of over-environmental costs of the nation's economic progress. You had dead pigs, dead ducks, and now black swans. China's animal apocalypse crosses into the twilight zone. Drones are to the rescue as we have drone targets farm animal abuse. Animal welfare group will use drone fitted with a surveillance camera to spy on the treatment of farm animals across Australia. 
Scientists urge Obama's advisor to investigate ethical issues raised by creating highly infectious weaponized strain of bird flu, which they say could easily be transmitted between people. The WHO's investigating a new H7N9 new Chinese bird flu strain, which has killed at least four people. This is GGN. I'm Darko. Thank you.